everybody, this is Dave, and today we're going to take a look at all of the books that are available for the Pulp Alley Skirmish game. Before we go too much further, please take a moment and click that like and share and subscribe button for us. So we're going to, we're going to take kind of a, a high-level view of each one of the books, maybe spend about two, two and a half minutes on each one of the books. And if this is something that you guys like, let me know. Leave a comment below, and maybe we'll, we'll do a deeper dive into each individual book in another video. So uh, I'd really like your feedback on that. Once you know, Watch this video and then let us know whether or not you found this helpful or not. The, uh, the first book that we're going to take a look at is the Quick Start Guide. And the Quick Start Guide... Uh, one thing about it is that it's available for free to download. If you go to our store or our pulpalley.com website or the uh, Facebook group also, you can download this for free. It has the introduction, it has the dice, and you can easily get started playing this. You know, it has two leagues in there. It has the start of turn sequence, the action sequence. It gives you the rules for moving. And these aren't really cut down rules. These are basically the rules straight out of the, the, the core rule book. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of the extra stuff in there though so it doesn't have things like it doesn't have stealth and it doesn't have character creation and it has it doesn't have all of the stuff for doing a shootout or a brawl but it gives you a lot of the basics and it's a great starting point for really focusing on the basic rules it even has a couple scenarios in there so you could you could easily get this either for free as a free download or off of our store if you want a, a nice uh, paper copy and I, I think this is basically the same as the um, as the download. I, I think both of them are the same. There may be a page or two that are different, but for the most part, I think the download and that are, are almost identical. The next is the core rule book. This is our second edition rule book. I love our rule book. Boys and girls, you know, this uh, here's the table of contents. We wrote Pulp Alley to be a, a player's game. If you're the type of person that just wants to collect games and put them on a shelf, and sometimes I feel like that's what I was, you know, years ago, I, w I would buy these cool looking games, these with pretty covers and pretty full color pages. Oh, they were so shiny and new, and we all fall for it, right? And then you get them and you find out, oh, it's it really doesn't play all that well. It does it's not a very good game. You you fall for the shiny cover and the shiny pages, and you believe, oh, that's cool. No, no. So uh, we're kind of the antithesis of that. We are we are a very plain rule book. It is black and white. It's not shiny. If anything, our pages are maybe cheap, and you know, and it's a throwback to. To the old pulp, uh, the old pulp magazines. They were printed on on the cheapest paper that they could find. Uh, you know, and I, if I could have printed this on pulp paper, maybe I would have. But that stuff falls apart a little too easy. So our rule book is not this pretty thing that you're going to go, ooh, look how pretty the rule book is. Instead, we spent our time making sure you had a good game to play. That's the big difference between Pulp Alley and most of those big shiny games is that Pulp Alley is actually an awesome game. So much in it, and, and again, this is more, you got your uh, setting rules if you want different settings, you got optional rules for weapons if you want weapons in there, there's character creation, it just boggles my mind that you, you could buy a skirmish game that only allowed you to play characters that the game designer made for you, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> It is hard. It is hard to make character creation rules for a skirmish game. Don't get me wrong. I know why people don't do it. It's hard to do. But it is also very fulfilling for the players when they can actually create their own characters the way they want them. Now, this book is also available in hardback. So you can get it in a hardback. You can get it in uh, the soft cover. This is also available as a PDF, a download. So there's all kinds of different ways you can get this. I'm really proud of this rule book. 
It took a lot of work and a lot of years to, to, to get it to here. In, in some ways, this isn't a complete revamp of the old first edition rules. and it, Very few changes, as a matter of fact. It's more of like a compilation. There are some differences, but it's, it's more about a compilation. A lot of those differences were actually came from our players and suggestions and ideas from the folks that have been playing the game for years and said, you know what, here's something that could maybe be a little bit better. And we listen to folks when they have good ideas like that, and even when they have bad ideas, we still listen to them. <laughs> Doesn't mean we change anything, but we still listen to them. Um, Let's see, so here are, here's the uh, hardcover rule book, the softcover rule book, and the quick start guide. Very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. All right. Now, the next book I'm going to tell you about is the scenarios book. And this is 12 scenarios. It is based on our scenario of the month releases for 2018. 12 scenarios in there. Each scenario takes about four or five pages. I don't remember. But I wanted to make sure you knew that these are also available to download. Uh, this book is available as a PDF to download. It does include some of the basic rules from the, the core rule book. You have the, the pages in there. If you want to cut out your own cards and make your own cards, you could do that. Copy those pages, cut them out, and make the cards that you want to use to play that scenario with. That's awesome. And it saves you some money there. But we do also offer these cards on our website so you can buy these cards. Hey, a quick shout out, and I, I, I don't do a good job of doing this, but a quick shout out to Sally Forth in the UK. These guys do a good job of carrying a lot of the Pulp Alley products. So Chris and Anne, uh, just a big thank you to, to those folks. If you're in the UK, if you're in Europe, you know, be sure and check out Sally Forth and the Pulp Alley products that they have online. Um, so, good good stuff. Now, here's the Perilous Island book. If they don't have something that you want for Pulp Alley, uh, they could probably get it. So, be sure and reach out to Chris or Ann and, and let them know that you're looking for something. And, and I bet you they'll try and get it for you. Perilous Island is the first campaign. You know, when I originally designed Pulp Alley, I was going to include the campaign in the basic rule book. It didn't happen that way. Uh, so it ended up being its own book. Now the first few pages are are definitely you know stuff that has been updated and included in the core rule book. So you get to the campaign section and that's where it really starts off. And this is about the missing archaeologist. This is about uh, uh, let's see what is it? Donovan Daro is his name, uh, a famous archaeologist. He's uh, he's gone missing so there there's lots of different reasons why you might be involved in the campaign and that's covered on on that next page there but I wanted to show you this this is the pulp setting so if you wanted to do this as a space opera setting if you wanted to do it in the old west or Victorian sci-fi or even pirate setting have it being in the Caribbean or as a spy fi so there are different ways that you could actually play this campaign Normally when we're playing, we place our games in the in the early 1930s, but there's no reason why this campaign couldn't be in different locations. Uh, there's, a, there's a player doing it right now that's playing it in Egypt. So he has he has put all of the uh, all of the uh, scenarios are located in Egypt for for his campaign. So uh, this one's kind of a globe trotting where you go from Hidalgo, Mexico to Morocco to Athens to Sorabaya and then eventually to Perilous Island. So Perilous Island is the second part, the second act in this uh, campaign. And once you arrive on Perilous Island, then you have to start trying to figure out where Daro went. So that's what you're trying to track down, is find what he did. And then eventually it leads to the Lost Empire. The further into the island that you go, you eventually discover uh, remnants of a Lost Empire. And then, you know, things get really weird. So... Awesome, awesome campaign book. You ought to definitely check that one out. 
Here's the uh, Pulp Gadgets Guns and Vehicles book. I like that cover. That's that's cool. Okay, now uh, for this book, what you really want to do is you get this if you're going to use a lot of vehicles, and and that means different stuff in your game. So airplanes, uh, airships. Uh, boats, uh, you know, just different weird stuff like that. Now, the basic vehicle rules are actually included in the core rulebook, so you don't need this book for that. What you need this for is the advanced rules. So as soon as you want to start mounting guns <laughs> on, on your roadster, then, you, then you're going to have to upgrade a little bit. <laughs> talks about uh, the different modifications that you can make to your vehicle. So all kinds of crazy stuff. You want to make a flying car, make your car flying. You want your, uh, your guns to have different modifications, then you can do that. Here's a, a list of some of the different uh, vehicles that you could do and, and some quick little versions of them. Uh, a couple pages for airplanes. We love using airplanes in our games. It's, it's a lot of fun. 148 scale is basically what we aim for normally when we're doing airplanes. I think that's a great scale. Colossal vehicles. This is for big giant robots and things like that. And the, what, the big way that it makes it different is that the colossal vehicle are broken up into various sections. So like most cars and trucks, when you shoot at them, you just hit the car or the truck. In this, you hit a particular section of it. Here's uh, stats for armored cars, uh, a couple different versions here, a medium tank, a heavy tank. Fun stuff, fun stuff. Now, if you haven't looked at our uh, vehicle pack of cards, make sure you check that out as well. That covers a lot of the, the basics, and it even has a lot of the basic rules on the cards. There's the, uh, the big airship and the big colossal vehicle. Lots of fun. It's, it's a fun book. Now, the, this also has gear and gadgets and stuff like that in there, but that stuff is, is in the second edition rulebook now, so you don't really need the, the, that book for, for that. Vice Alley is another campaign, and uh, we're doing a, one of these campaigns right now, Dave and, and Jason and Chris, and we may be adding another player, Brett. Now, when I do these campaigns, I very seldom play in them as long as we have, you know, two or more other players, so I, I just kind of run the camera and record them and kibitz and things like that. Here's the Vice Alley campaign. It talks about the different locations, uh, the different people of interest. It has the. It is a vigilantes versus syndicate, and in, in the end, both of both factions are really aiming for the same thing, and that is to overthrow the specter, who is the kingpin of King City. Both sides really want to try and overthrow him, but for different reasons. And as you become a member of the vigilantes or the syndicate, then you can go up through the ranks and become a, a minister to society and a hero of the people and yada yada. Lots of cool scenarios in this. And you can put these scenarios in a lot of different settings. Again, we aim for about the early 1930s, but you could play this campaign in an asteroid belt. You could play it, you know, in Victorian sci-fi and on and on. So uh, it's, it's easily adaptable to a lot of different settings. Here's the Tomb of the Serpent. Uh, and I think, I think this may be a, a follow-up. We, we may do a follow-up book for Tomb of the Serpent. I don't want to say too much about it yet, but I, I think that might be our next campaign will be a follow-up to, to this book. So here's The Rise of the Serpent. It kind of gives you a little bit of the history of Apophis and how he relates to the world and his aims. And then it, you go into Chapter 1. Chapter 1 are, are really solo scenarios. So these are the scenarios that get you involved. And the idea is, is that your leader has been contacted by the the old gods of Egypt and warned that something is rising in Egypt and and so these early scenarios are to to strengthen that connection with the old gods of Egypt to find out what's going on and give you a, a more idea about what they what you need to do to stop Apophis chapter 2 is in Cairo and that's where you build your you have to collect clues and figure out where the uh, tomb of Apophis is, and the tomb of Apophis is basically a prison as you go through the uh, burning desert to try and find 
the tomb of Apophis, it is where he is imprisoned, but he is attempting to escape and if he's if he makes it out of the tomb, you know, he will wreak havoc on the world. So that's that's the idea. You know, we there were certain things when we were doing the pulp alley that we felt like we really had to do, and there had to be an Egypt campaign, right? So this is our this is our homage to the uh, to uh, the mummy and, and all those sort of things. So Egypt, uh, it's a big part. Now this is Lost World of Lemuria. And I, I think a lot of people don't know that, that the Lost World of Lemuria is a follow-up to the Perilous Island campaign. It actually kind of dovetails into it. And you could actually finish the Perilous Island campaign and go straight into arriving in Lemuria. One of the ways of this page here kind of talks about the history of Lemuria. It is a world that has existed at the bottom of the ocean for centuries, maybe thousands of years. Has different ways for you to arrive in, in Lemuria and one of them is based off of how the Perilous Island campaign ends. So the Perilous Island campaign ends and then you find your, your way into Lemuria. Lemuria is currently a world teetering on the edge of destruction. It is, and can you save Lemuria? Lemuria is also lashing out at the surface world, though, and attempting to cause chaos and destruction on the surface world. That's part of the story. But can you save Lemuria and also save the surface world as well? Big cool story. Uh, lots of fun scenarios. Nearly all of the scenarios in this book can be played uh, solo. They can be played co-op. It's, it's a lot of fun. And remember that in these books for Tomb of the Serpent and Lost World of Lemuria, you don't have to buy the campaign decks. The campaign decks are printed inside the rule book. And if you want to copy that and cut them out and make your own cards, you can do that. So those those cards are in there so when you want a really fun campaign to play through that's you have the the turn lost world of lemuria you have uh, vice alley you have perilous island which one am i missing tomb of the serpent a lot of fun a lot of fun so uh let us know if you enjoyed this video let us know if you would like to see more a deeper dive into these books and see you know more about them and while you are at it Click that like and share and subscribe button for us. And if you are already a subscriber, please remember to click the bell so you will be notified when we add a new video. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much for your support. That's all the time we have for today. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.